glad you could join me in my kitchen. Diane here. I want to show you one of the most requested recipes in my little bag of tricks. People are always complimenting me on this and I make so many pies. Pot pie, sweet, savory, makes no difference. But anyway, I want to show you how I make it because it is about ingredients and it is about technique as well. So what I like to do, here's how it goes. Um, this calls for all-purpose flour and pastry flour. So you can make your own pastry flour. You don't have to go buy it, and it's pretty easy. Into the processor, which I like to do because it's fast and easy and makes less of a mess, put one cup of flour. Then in your measuring cup, put one and three-quarter tablespoons of cornstarch, and then fill the measuring cup up again with another cup of flour. And put that in the processor. And then you want to measure out, I'm just measuring about a half teaspoon of salt. This is a different kind of salt. It's called real salt. I love this stuff um, for Redmond, Utah, but you do use 25% less. Um, you can go up to a teaspoon of salt if um, you're using kosher or sea salt or something like that. So anyway, uh, the, now you have the pastry flour that you just made plus one cup of all-purpose flour. And I like to mix that up really well in the beginning. Then, after that's mixed in the processor, that acts as sort of like a sifter, then put in your butter that you already have cubed. You want to make sure that the butter is nice and cold because the trick with this is keeping the butter cold, keeping the lard cold, and working with it as quick as you can. So it's three quarters pound of butter, quarter pound of lard. The butter is for the flake and the lard is for, or the butter is for the flavor and the lard is for the flake. Then give that just a couple pulses. Don't let it run all the time, just to slightly mix it. Then you're gonna put in another two cups of flour. And I scoop this off the top with the bag itself so that I get a level cup. And there's our four cups plus our salt and pastry flour. So it's three cups all purpose, one cup pastry, three quarters pound of butter to a quarter pound of lard to a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of salt. I do also like unsalted butter so that you can add your own salt. Then after it starts to look like a pea, then you put it into a bowl. Now this part I always do by hand because you really need to have a feel for when this um, dough is done. You can't really get that feel and you want to check the uh, dough to see if you have any larger clumps of butter in it. If so, press them through your fingers. But you want to work quick, especially if you have hot hands. Um, and if so, you might want to uh, keep nice cold water. But anyway, then after you have that and figured out that that's nicely mixed, what you're going to do is add about a half a cup of water. And I say about because in the winter when it's dry inside, you're going to add a little bit more water. And of course, it depends on the flour too. In the summer, when it's really humid, you'll need a lot less water. But by mixing it and ha by hand, you you will f f you will figure out when the f uh, flour and the butter and the water just come together. You don't want to overwork it because that creates a really tough dough, and you don't get it as flaky as if by doing it by hand. Then the other part of this technique, actually, you know what? That's coming together. Not bad, and it holds together. Yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it alone like that. Okay, so, because it does hold its shape. If you press it together, it'll hold its shape fine. So, and you don't wanna overwork this, but what I'm gonna do is dump this out onto the counter, and then the other part of this technique is called dressage, and it's a French term uh, where you're creating the layers in the dough which creates the flake. So what you do after you dump it out and so just gently push it together, take the heel of your hand and push it out on the counter and you can see where 
the flakiness comes from because you'll see the butter start to layer. It will look like shards in the dough as opposed to looking like little clumps of tiny peas. And so you're going to pick this up and you're going to push it together a couple times and it does come together nicely and then push it out about three times by turning it into a ball, turning it again, it's two or three times. The board scraper becomes your friend too. Board scrapers are wonderful, it helps form it. And then push it out again and you can see all the little flakes in the dough. So after that, then I form it into one nice big ball of dough and at that point get your scale out and you can put the whole thing on the scale and divide it by four. This will make two double crust large pies or four single crust large pies. By large I mean it will uh, uh, be nice to do a 10 inch deep dish pie or tart pan or what have you. So anyway after that is into one ball I'm going to divide it and weigh it out. To, it's usually around 10 and a half ounces. Um, usually is a divide by four. And then what you want to do after this is divided out nicely is to take each ball and press it into a disc. If you have to add just a tiny bit more bench flour or flour to your uh, work surface, do so because you want to form a cute little hamburger like patty. And then what you're going to do is wrap them all in either saran or wax paper uh, to be ziplocked to go to the refrigerator or the freezer. But I want this to go in the refrigerator overnight so that the flour fully hydrates and it just makes for a much better crust. If you don't have the time to do that, you can do this in an hour, but I really do like overnight. It does make a difference. And so again, press these out into little hamburger like patties, nice and round. And you will have your four balls of dough done in absolutely no time. It's nice to have this done and in the freezer because in the freezer, if you have it in the freezer and you have these already pressed out, it doesn't take long to thaw them to be able to use them. Usually about a half hour or so and they are ready to be used. So anyway, that is how you create a really nice pie dough. Um, another note I might add is if I knew, if I weren't going to put this in the freezer and I knew what I was going to do with that, in other words, sweet or savory, if it were sweet, I would add about a tablespoon of sugar to it. However, if you don't know, it's better to leave the sugar out of it and then just add just add the salt because of you're making up for the unsalted butter and then you can do anything you want. If I do a double crust sweet pie then what I'll do is egg wash the top of the pie and sugar the top because it adds a nice sheen and it adds a nice glisten and it just makes for a really pretty pie. But anyway, so that is a quick lesson in how to make pie dough and I hope you can use it. I hope you make it. If at first it doesn't come out right, do it again because you'll be really happy with that recipe. So thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again. Yeah.